This video is sponsored by Alcet E Homes, whose mission it is to accelerate the advent of sustainable healthy living systems around the world. Hi, welcome to Best in Tesla, news episode 68. A short seller is making a $530 million bet against Tesla. The road to 0 to 60 time in 1.1 second is confirmed. And Ford reveals their F-150 Lightning. What could be Greece Lightning? And the International Energy Agency says no more investing in fossil fuel. And Giga Berlin and Texas are already producing stuff. Hmm. All this and much more to come on today's episode. Let's dive right in. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. And just when we thought that Tesla short sellers was going away, we see a very big bet against Tesla. Michael Burry, famous for The Big Short, has reiterated his position against Tesla as a new 13F filing with the SEC reveals he has placed a $530 million bet against Tesla. As you could probably guess, I don't quite get this bet, I think this will be a very expensive bet for Michael Burry. And others are agreeing with me. Renaissance Technology has increased its Tesla stake by 217% over the past three months, indicating confident in the auto manufacture. One of the things they do get is that Tesla's batteries will set them apart from everyone else. Everyone else has big plans, if you can call 1 million EVs by 2025 big plans, but anyway, they show off big plans like 30 EV models by 2025, but they don't really have the batteries to back up these plans. Or sure, they can come out with 30 models, but if they're only going to produce about 20,000 of each of them, it will still only be about 600,000 EVs. And just to give you one comparison, if we believe GM and if we believe Tesla, and just to give Tesla a bit of credit, we always hear about Tesla not meeting their deadlines, but just remember GM did promise us about 25 EV models in just five years, and that was over three years ago. So I would even say Tesla has more credibility than GM, but let's just say we believe them both. Well, GM has announced in April they will build a second battery factory in collaboration with LG Chem. But I can't find out how big this one will be, so probably about the same size as the other one, about 30 gigawatts. Or let's just give them a little bit extra and say they will build one that can make about 40 gigawatt hours. And the first one is not expected to be fully up and running before 2020 and they have not even started on the second one, so probably about 24 or 2025. So in four years time, they will have about 70 gigawatt hours. That is enough for about the 1 million cars they want to get over by 2025. But Tesla's Berlin factory alone will make about 200, 250 gigawatt hours per year. That is still about three times as many gigawatt hours than GM. And Tesla still have their 35 to 40 gigawatt hours with Panasonic in Nevada. And they will also build batteries at Texas probably just as big as Berlin, but my guess it will actually be bigger. And then China will also start producing batteries. So in 2025, Tesla could easily be somewhere between 600 to 1000 gigawatt hours. And GM will probably be somewhere about 10 to 15 percent of that. And Volkswagen will at that point be at a similar place with two of their 40 gigawatt hour battery factories being online. And Ford has just announced that it is getting into battery manufacturing by committing to a 60 gigawatt hour factory in the US as part of a joint venture with Korea's SK Innovation. It was only a few years ago when Ford didn't see much value in getting into battery cell production, but Ford is waking up, but they still don't really understand how fast they have to do do this because Ford did say it expects their need to be about 240 gigawatt hours by 2030. 
That is only enough for about 2.5 million cars, so no one is really moving as fast as Tesla, not even close. And I don't understand why someone like Michael Burry doesn't see this as a big lead for Tesla. And Tesla is also making new innovation in the way they are producing the cars, producing the most faster than anybody else. And you know how I feel about full self-driving, that the race is already over. So how anyone can see Tesla going down or going bankrupt is just beyond me. But it's not only humans in different funds that have different opinions on Tesla. AI also have an opinion and it is betting on Tesla. An exchange trade fund driven by artificial intelligence has just loaded up on shares in Tesla. And it has a history of correctly predicting the stock price swing. It did buy on the last dip and sold the stock at its all time high. And now it is again loading up on more stocks. And it's kind of nice to see a fund that is actually run by intelligence. But it's going to be fun to see who will win this one, the AI or the human Michael. My bet is on the AI, because I am of course also bullish on Tesla. And I just can't see how Tesla going up, 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 up is a bad thing. I understand Ford going down, down, down is a bad thing with $163 billion in debt. So in my view, I can only see that Michael is buying into all the fud on Tesla. But time will tell. One of the things that's always discussed between bulls and bears are profits. But New Street Research is looking for return of operating assets. Pierre Faragio from New Street Research said he sees many comments about Tesla's profitability or lack thereof. They often confuse thoughts of cross margins, segments result, exceptional or financial items, regulatory credits, although the question of whether Tesla successfully built factories to manufacture cars and sell them is rarely discussed. The analyst points out that the only suitable way to gauge Tesla's operational profitability is to look at cash return on operating assets. Out of a dollar of assets immobilized in the ground, how much cash can Tesla generate in one year? The resulting metric is bulletproof, as it represents the ability of Tesla's operation to generate cash. Farragut concludes that the increasing asset utilization will drive near doubling of return on operating assets from 20% in 2020 to 38% in 2023. So remind me again, why is it that short sellers are seeing this as a bad thing or just don't see it at all? The International Energy Agency has just made a report and are saying no more investing in fossil fuel starting now. The IEA report, Net Zero by 2050, a roadmap to the global energy system, sets out in details ahead of COP26, the climate change conference, what governments, companies, investors and citizens need to do to fully decarbonize the energy sector and put the emission on a path in line with the temperature rise of 1.5 degrees Celsius. That means no more investment in fossil fuel from 2021. As they said, if governments are serious about the climate crisis, there can be no investment in oil, gas and coal from now on, from this year. I guess this will be a big topic at the COP26, which will be held in the UK in November. And this will no doubt put a big squeeze on the fossil fuel industry in a big big push forward for renewable energy and electric vehicles. And probably more countries will start the ban of ice cars faster, just as we right now have 14 countries banning ice cars from 2030. And President Biden wants to go this way as well, and he has just ordered the federal government to buy electric vehicles made in America with union labor. There is just one problem, no such vehicle exists. Tesla is the leading US electric car manufacturer and has several great American made models, but it is not unionized. And while GM employs union labor to make their electric Chevy Bolt, roughly three quarters of its components come from outside the US, missing the 50% threshold to be considered American made under federal procurement law. But no matter what will happen in the US or China and Europe that is both pushing hard for EVs, everything is pointing at a big disruption 
in renewables and electric vehicles. This will not only be a normal disruptive technology, as we have seen many, many times before, because this disruption is getting help being pushed forwards by unions and governments with incentive to buy EVs and banning the sales of ICE cars in only 9 years and stopping the investment in fossil fuel. The pressure cooker is on for the fossil fuel and the ICE car industry. They might think they have a lot of time to make this switch, but we just see more and more countries committing themselves to zero emission earlier and earlier. I still think this will be economical suicide to keep making new ICE cars by the second half of this decade. And companies like BMW still want to keep investing in internal combustion engines for the next 30 years. Well, good luck with that, boys. And Ford showed off their F-150 Lightning. What could be Grease Lightning? And it is no doubt a very great truck, but that could be a problem. But I made a whole video about this, so if you haven't seen that one yet, you should definitely check that one out. But Ford did make a great electric pickup truck here, with up to 300 miles of range, 11 outlets and a 400 liter front that opens up fully. I really like that front, very well done here. And it can tow up to 10,000 pounds, do a 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds, just under 600 horse powers and the starting price is just under forty thousand dollars that is for the very very scraped base model that we don't even know anything about yet but under forty thousand dollars that is great and very unexpected but if you want all that ford is showing off the ford f-150 lightning does end up costing over ninety thousand dollars so oh, that is quite steep but i think ford did a great job here just like we see with the ford mustang mark e that is also a very great ev and Sandy Monroe did make his first impression from how the car looks built from underneath and was very impressed with how the car was built, unlike the Volkswagen ID4. But as he said, if Tesla Model Y got an A, Mark E would get an A plus from the way it's built from underneath. So that's very nice to see that Ford is, as we know, is not rushing to market as much as someone like Volkswagen. And it shows in the way their cars are built. Ford has done it right, built it from the ground up and used that to make some improvement to how the car is built. Well done Ford, both on the Mark E and on the new F-150 Lightning. But Ford is still in a bit of trouble. And if you want to find out why, check out my latest video on the F-150 Lightning. But the Lightning did get over 20,000 pre-orders in the first 12 hours, so that was very nice. But remember, the Cybertruck got over 146,000 pre-orders in the first 24 hours. And the Model Y, made in China, got over 100,000 in the first four hours. So yeah, the demand for the F-150 is no doubt great, but it's not like Tesla great. But if you're wondering if this will hurt Tesla sales of the Cybertruck at all, I think we'll find the answer from Laura Colony, a reporter from CNBC and a known Tesla hater that made a poll about who is your EV truck order going to after the reveal of the F-150. Well, it seems to be a pretty clear winner here, Laura. And as we talked about in one of my latest videos, the charging infrastructure is growing fast. Because it's not just Tesla that wants a piece of the pie. Dutch Fastnet and Tesla has built a fast charging station in Oxford. I think this is the first collaboration between Tesla and Fastnet. And the hub will be Europe's most powerful electric vehicle charging hub with up to 10 megawatts of power available for future expansion. The company is based in Amsterdam and has so far built 137 fast charging stations across the Netherlands, Germany, Brighton, Belgium and Switzerland and is looking to expand into France. And it plans to build at least 40 stations across its market in 2021 and increase that number substantially in 2022. Yes, Fastnet is just one of many companies here in Europe that is building charging infrastructure. And Fastnet is not kidding around. Most of their charging stations have over 150 kilowatt charges. They even have charging stations with over 300 kilowatt charges. So they are building big future-proof charging stations, just like we have seen with GreenServe in the UK. That is also looking for more land to expand their network and build more of these cool electric forecards with Tesla chargers and everything else. 
and can also charge with up to 350 kilowatts. Now that's what I'm talking about, building charging stations for the future, not just putting up one 50 kilowatt charger and call that a charging station, like we have seen with someone like Clever and Eon here in Denmark. No, putting up dozens of charging stalls with up to 300 and 350 kilowatt charges that no car can even use yet, but the charging stations are ready for the future cars that will be able to do this. And speaking of charger, Tesla China just put up their first V3 supercharging station made with only chargers made from Tesla's new supercharger factory in China. And this video shared by Jane Shanghai showed its superchargers factory in action. Yet another factory that will set Tesla apart in this game and keep Tesla in the lead with the biggest and best charging infrastructure in the world. Yeah, no one can touch this. You can't touch this. And let's take a look at the Giga factory in Texas. Because I made a big mistake about the area in the last news episode. Very sorry about that guys. So I have been watching a bit more of Joe Tackmeyer's video and have now gotten a clear understanding of where exactly things are. And also thanks to Joe for writing to me in the comments of my last news show telling me what I got wrong. So thank you so much Joe. And Joe made some great overview maps of the whole area that just make it very very simple to understand. So the construction of the other side of the big road to the southwest is apparently a building for SpaceX, so that is pretty cool, probably for making Starlink dishes. And the Bobcat construction is on the other side, showed here in purple. And Joe did confirm that the construction we have been talking about as the battery part of the factory is this part shown in red. So now we are up to date on this big area and it is big. But the construction that is going on right now is only 39% of the entire area. So the whole place when it is done will be over twice as big. And Dr. Know It All did tweet to me saying that he drew past the Geek Factory 5 and even with 130 kilometers an hour it took a good minute to drive past it. And that is driving past the factory, this little yellow part of the humongous place. It's going to be some side when it is all done. And Joe also caught these two guys putting up pillars. Yes, it is only two guys jumping around on top of these pillars, putting them into place, together with the guy in the crane, of course. But man, those two guys have quite the amazing job, if you ask me. That must be quite the frill. But Gigatexa is already producing some products. Yes, because on the 19th of May, Joe also filmed some trucks being loaded up with Model Y casting pieces. And there are quite a few pieces here. I'll bet they're going to truck them over to the Fremont factory to help with even more casting pieces for the Model Y, because they're just continuing making these casting. Just look at this tweet from Joe on the 21st of May. This is a lot of casting coming out of the Giga factory. That is not done yet. So Giga Texa is already contributing to a production of the Model Y. That's kind of cool. But it's not only in the Giga Factory 5, they are making some crazy progress. At the Giga Factory 4 in Berlin, we also see the first testing of the casting machine. This looks very much like the Model Y rear casting and is done at Giga Berlin. So a lot of progress is done here in these two new Giga Factories. And Elon did go to visit Giga Berlin this week to check up on the progress of the Model Y production. And Elon said it looks like we could start down production by the end of this year. And he did later make a tweet asking suppliers to please accelerate. Maybe some suppliers are lagging behind or maybe the factory will be finished sooner than expected. Who knows? But Giga Berlin did receive permission to install machines and equipment for the EV final assembly. So things are moving in the right direction. But Elon did also take time to talk to fans as well and take the time to talk in private with the folks that are doing all the great drone work 
from Giga Berlin that also gave him a little sticker that Elon put on his gaming laptop, a Dogecoin sticker. So cool to see Elon taking time in his very busy schedule, just the best CEO on this planet. And Elon did also tweet, aiming for extreme precision with the next gen Model Y, microns not millimeters. Yes, the next gen Model Y will be something the world has never seen before, like I made a whole video about, but it's not just a new little feature as we see on old ice cars where the next model is pretty much the same just with a few tweaks. No, this Model Y is going to be totally different from the inside out. It might look the same, but this car is going to be built with the Giga castings. That will be perfect every time, making the build quality probably some of the best in the world for a mass-produced car. And it will also have the 4680 cell with the new structural battery pack. This will be a very special car. But it's not only coming out of Giga Berlin, because Elon did confirm that the Model Y coming out of Giga Factory 5 in Texas will also have the 4680 cells. I don't think people quite get how big a deal this next-gen Model Y will be in so many ways. Another great car that is just around the corner is the refreshed Model S. And Elon did just say that they will hold a delivery event. Yes, we have seen the refreshed Model S starting to pile up at the Fremont factory, but still no deliveries. But that will change soon, because Elon did tweet that they will hold a delivery event on the 3rd of June at the Fremont factory for the fastest production car ever. So hopefully we will also get some more details about the car at the event. And the beginning of a whole new era for the Model S is about to start. The demand seems to be off the charts for this refreshed Model S. Tesla even put the orders for the Plaid Plus on pause on their website. You can't order that right now. Probably because Tesla, as usual, can't keep up with demand. Yeah, SpaceX just made another Starlink mission, landed the rocket back down, and what else is new? Well, this one was actually with ride sharing. So SpaceX did only launch 52 satellites because they were also launching a satellite for a customer. And we might get a Starship presentation this year, because when asked on Twitter, Elon said, good idea. And speaking of Starship, NASA did award SpaceX over $50 million for a Starship orbital refueling demonstration. Oh yeah. And SpaceX is stacking Starship's first orbital class super heavy booster. Can't wait to see this thing take off with a Starship on top. Madness. And SpaceX got a little sign up at Boca Chica saying Starbase. The first step of making Starfleet real. We, we gotta make Starfleet happen. This is going to be so cool. And let's squeeze the last short news topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla Shorts. Italy's plug-in vehicle market more than tripled year over year in Q1, taking 6.6% market share. Nice. And Lamborghini announced its plans for electrification just two years after they said that that would probably never happen. But anyway, the first fully electric Lambo is said to be coming before the end of this decade. So I guess the Tesla Roadster will have the electric supercar territory for itself for a while. And speaking of the Roadster, it's been almost a year since we saw Slava Popovsky animation of the Roadster with the SpaceX package, and Elon has talked about it many times before. But since the Roadster has just been put in the Peterson Automotive Museum, we now officially have it from Tesla. The Roadster will be able to do a 0 to 60 in just 1.1 seconds. And a big Tesla fan has just made what is probably the worst first Tesla pool. <laughs> nice. And the Tesla Model S Plaid took to the racetrack of Laguna Seca and made an unofficial record of 1.29.9. They are getting close to beating the fastest record at Laguna that is 1.27.6 set by McLaren Senna. Maybe the Plaid Plus will break it. Or the Roadster definitely will. Tesla's cars are pretty much a roller coaster in itself, but Evanex posted what if Elon Musk made a theme park? Tesla Cyberland. <laughs> yeah, I would go. And we saw that the Hummer EV weighs more than a Tesla Model S 
and Model 3 combined. 4,102 kilos to be exact. That's a heavy truck. The big beast of the Cybertruck is only about 3,000 kilos, so a ton lighter than the Hummer EV. That bad boy needs to go on a diet. Herbert Dees was out criticizing hydrogen and says, please listen to the science. And Elon was quickly out supporting Herbert by saying, Dice is right, hydrogen is a staggeringly dumb form of energy storage for cars, barely worth considering it for a rocket up a stage, which is the most compelling use. And the rumor of Tesla building a factory in the UK is getting some shape again after Elon just visited the UK. But still nothing official yet, but more and more rumors are picking up for the UK factory. But Elon Musk said he was open to building a Tesla factory in Russia, doing a Kremlin sponsored event for students. And Homer's catalog tweeted, Mercedes-Benz US is recalling 342,366 of their latest vehicles due to software issues. Customers will have to visit dealerships to install the software update unless they pay for Mercedes Me subscription service required for an over-the-air update. Or maybe just sell that one and get a tester, then you will get a free over-the-air update. And Chinese media outlets apologize to Tesla for brake failure report with zero evidence. Well, I guess CNBS could learn a bit from Chinese media, admitting when they are wrong. And do you want two free stocks? Yeah, I thought so. If you use the link in the description to open a new Webull account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening the account, and another free stock valued up to $1,600 if you found your account with at least $100. And it will, of course, help support this channel as well. A win-win for the both of us. And you do have a chance to invest in both Bitcoin and Dogecoin with Webull as well. Enjoy. Before we end up with a bit of fun, I just want to give a quick shout out to my news members and patrons of this channel. Paul Jennings, Edward Tam, Jill Chenesau, John J. Babacalo, and my two new thank you for watching members, Victor Palencia and Peter Hawks. Thank you all very much for the support. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this show. Thank you. And let's end off with a bit of fun. And since everything is going so great for SpaceX, I thought we would take a little trip down memory lane with this clip of Elon Musk talking about the time when not everything went as planned for SpaceX. Yep, I, I've, I've been there, I've given a talk and, um, you know, the, the first launch of Falcon 1, we had a Falcon sat from the, the Air Force Academy. Um, that, that rocket blew up. But the, <laughs> But, but, but then the funny thing is that it blew up, it, it, like here's this truth is stranger than fiction. Um, the, the satellite uh, was shot through the fairing, um, arced through the air a, a couple hundred meters, and then plunged through the roof of a tool shed, uh, and then landed on the floor. Um, and was actually in reasonably good shape. I mean, for crashing through the ceiling, but you know, you're like recognizable, you know. Um, and, and we, gave, we gave, so gave it back, and so we, we've not lost one of your satellites. <laughs> so, so from a SpaceX just, perspective, just it a, out. a partial mission success. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, well, it's, it's not lost. I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little the worse for it's a little bit worse for wear of it, you know. Uh, but, but here you go. <laughs> that is all we have time for in this news episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help out this video. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only, so don't miss out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.